Good evening, beloved. Welcome to Exacting Insight into the Word Wednesday Bible Study. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Pastor Shepherd Solera Mann Jr. And we want to welcome everybody here this evening that's joining us from wherever you're joining us. Those that are members of Exacting Truth Ministries, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, our ministering uh, family and fellowship family. We want to extend blessings to you. We love you. We're thinking about you in these pivotal times. And um, great for you to be here. Those of you all who are able to join us, those of you who are joining us from wherever you are joining us from, uh, we want to welcome you. And we're glad to have you here with us. We're not going to waste any time. We know that you're busy. So many of you all who are still exempt from sheltering in place or what have you, you may just now have arrived home from your various job assignments or what have you, or if you're checking on, you know, individuals and you are out and about uh, doing the work of charity, doing the wonderful works of our creator, excuse me, looking after one another and being a blessing to others, then we're grateful that you take out your time to do so. We want to encourage you to do that, particularly with those uh, who may be less fortunate, those who may be older and can't get around or they're in that critical age uh, where they are more susceptible to the things that are going on in our world. So to make a long story short, you might you know, just be at a place in a position where you're settling yourself for this evening, preparing meals. And so, you know, we don't want to uh, get in your way of what it is that you're doing, but it is important from the construct of how tithes should be viewed, we should take whatever percentage of our life and our existence that belongs to the Creator. We should designate that as a tenth and we should present it to Him first. So we're glad that you're gathering. I want to share gratitude that through these financial times, those of you who have continued uh, to give and support this ministry, we just want to thank you. We don't take it for granted because uh, so many people are in panic. So many people have lost their jobs and are facing very troubling and financial times. So we want to uh, show pr appreciation to the faithful. You know, it is your faith uh, and it's not about any type of requirement that we require, but we do want to note that. I also want to encourage each and every one of you who turn, who tune in rather if the Bible study is a blessing to you. If the messages and the sermons are a blessing to you, we are living in a time, listen, where people are troubled. They have anxiety is like at an apex and people are becoming troubled. We're finding out that this delay, this quarantine is going to last. It's going to be extended. We share it with you that it more than likely would be. And as time progresses, even if infrastructure is in place, even if things seem relatively calm and, and we're, things are relatively civil, it is just the nature of man. If you go back to Saturday Sabbath's lesson, and we just are blessed by the viewership of that. It's just the nature of man, the carnal nature, just to become unhinged. Because when you look and you have no spirit and no faith to lean upon in the cases that that is the case, then what do you lean on when uh, you know panic and anxiety ensues and goes beyond what we have resources and reserves for. So we want to be prayerful. We want to be loving. We want to be wise. But we also want to realize where there are words <clears throat> of truth and there are resources that can be a help in this time and in this troubling time and age. So those who have been blessed by these words, please, even now, uh, share these lives. I believe that it'll be a blessing around the world. It's not about me. It's about getting help and it's about getting his word to the masses. So we appreciate you in that cooperation. Do get involved in the comments. Uh, so many of us, we, we, we haven't had the opportunity to meet in the fellowship, even those that uh, regularly attend our fellowship and are part of the Exacting Truth family. Uh, get involved in the comments. It's fun. Uh, it's an encouragement. And it gives you an opportunity to, uh, to see your brothers and sisters that are here and gathering and you can communicate as it were with regards to that. So, and it's always an encouragement you know, to 
being impacted uh, by the word or what have you. So do that as well. We're going to pray briefly. Heavenly Father, eternal and gracious Father, we thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for the advantage which is uh, Navi, the prophecy. We thank you for uh, your warning. We're asking that you give us strength. Uh, continue to allow us to be prepared for the things that not only are, but the things that which are to come. And we lean and we trust on you, asking that you allow us to be a city set up on a hill that cannot be hidden, uh, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. We're asking that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Remember the truly poor today, those who are sick and shut in. And we say it exactly true for ministries, particularly uh, remember those who need remembering. That number is expand, expanding as we speak. The fearful, the skeptical, the unbelieving, those who have been turned off to faith uh, and your pure religion because of man's uh, dogma, because of sacrilege and hypocrisy. And we're asking that you allow us once again to be a light. And we ask these blessings in the name that is above every name, Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach. In Christ's name we pray, amen. If you will, with your codices, with your Bible, the Holy Writ, turn with me and join me in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. As has been aforementioned, and particularly our ministries prior to Facebook Live lessons, we are literally living in foretold times. Our text for this evening is titled, Moving Ahead of the Curve. Moving Ahead of the Curve. When dealing with a text such as our text, which is titled, again, Moving Ahead of the Curve, it's a message expounding a bit further on the advantages of receiving and adherence to advanced words. What are advanced words, you might say? Well, more commonly, we refer to them as prophecy. Also, lessons promises and warnings that have been given to believers by the Most High via his elected or chosen messengers. Let's make this abundantly clear because mankind often seems to miss the point regarding this topic. Many view the subject of being elected by God out of their carnal eyes and understanding. Also with carnal ambition. What do we mean by that? Rather than from the word and what the word actually states, and from a spiritual explanation found within. So we view it, I would say, colloquially. That's a fancy word for, uh, you know, what we make up as slang or vernacular, which is another word that means you change the audible meaning of a word uh, despite its prior written meaning. So we look at prophecy and we began to view it and to define it as the culture currently sees fit and not uh, re referring to, excuse me, rather, the orthodox meaning from the Greek word orthodoxa, which means correct thought, the correct meaning out of scripture. Being elected by the Most High, in fact, does make his body believer favored by him, but it doesn't grant us the permission among one another to view ourselves as more special than any other member of mankind. You got to remember that we've been elected and we've been chosen for his purpose and not our own. We must remember that according to the Christ teachings in the gospel of Matthew chapter five, that the most high does not favor anyone that is not meek or humble. So according to the word and not even according to my explanation or my opinion base or whatever, because we live through the word, you can identify the true chosen messengers of faith by their humility level. We're talking about the part of the Sermon on the Mount where the Christ was referring to the Beatitudes, as it were. And, you know, for example, uh, Matthew 5 and 5, if I recall, the meek shall inherit the earth. So his vessels are exempt from pride. His vessels are broken vessels. So the pride oftentimes and the arrogance and the hubris that you see in modern day ministry, the putting forth of someone and themselves and their agenda before the most highest agenda, even out of the word, 
that is an easy telltale sign that it's not a judgment coming from an individual, but those aren't the fruits of the Most High. That's not the fruits of the Spirit. So we can say uh, in, in a declarative fashion with confidence that he's not working. That's not him. He's not speaking through that individual. It's not a judgment uh, or a determination out of our own opinion view. It needs to line up with the word. As believers, our direct assignment and responsibility is not simply to receive these words in our hearing, like we're ministering right now, like you, you're joining us live for this Bible study on this Wednesday evening, but your responsibility goes far and beyond just hearing. It's not just, beloved, hearing these words, but also to react accordingly and obediently to the information given through these words. So you're not just receiving this because you're a member of a particular body fellowship and that's your fellowship base. If we're elected and if we're called according to his purpose and if we are the call and called according to his purpose, as Paul the Apostle addressed the church at Rome, then we must understand that there's a reason why we're called. There's a reason why we're receiving this. There's a reason why we're receiving it and we are paying attention to it, and we're cognizant of it all the while, and I know I'm not the only one. You all as believers will understand this and can concur, I believe, wholeheartedly. While you're hearing from the Most High, people around you, even people in your own direct surroundings, in your ciphers, even in your home maybe, may not be paying attention or hearing the same things or receiving the same things. So if you're receiving something, and someone else may be standing right next to you, it's not, they're not getting it or it's not even registering, then you need to understand the emphasis behind why you have been picked to be aware when so many others are not. So there's a responsibility that comes with receiving the word. Now, for example, it can be frustrating daily for hours. We are being subjected to press conferences and updates. And I'm not saying that there's a bad thing. People want to know. I, I would suggest, if I can digress for a moment, as a, a shepherd, as someone who has to pronounce things before people and people are looking for guidance, even from a spiritual construct, I would suggest that you know, by no means would I say don't be informed. Exact and truth is about being informed. But take a moment to breathe. Step away from it. I mean, you know, You'll drive yourself crazy, a spirit of anxiety, a spirit of, of fear, even irrational fear can just grip you and take a hold of you and just lead you in a direction. It can cause you to be open to the devices of the adversary if 24 hours a day, listen, we're connected. We're connected to the online and the internet matrix as we before mentioned you know, in the palms of our hands with our phones and our electronic devices. You know, we're constantly informed with every update. Everybody's opinion is in everybody's face. Lord, have mercy. Take a break. Go somewhere and drink some milk. Do something. You know, have a glass of water. Uh, you have a conversation. Try to laugh. Distract yourself. I just want to say that because if we're constantly just stuck on the updates, and if we're not trusting on our creator, then that could be laying the foundations uh, for a great degree of fear and a lot of the things that will cause you not to be ready and not to be able to be deployed, to be an asset spiritually in these trying times. So as I aforementioned, we're being subject to on a state level, some of us on a local and city level and even on a national level with the presidential uh, response team to this virus and this outbreak. And we can display as a people a large modicum or amount of distrust with what we're hearing, depending on our trust quotient with who we're listening to, whether it be the governor, whether it be the president, whether it be someone in the president's administration, the staff or cabinet. And so many of us, we get into these subsequent debates um, among one another online about theories and maybe even conspiracy theories. And I'm not saying that there's uh, you know, not some foundation to some of the things that we're skeptical concerning. But I want you to think and frame this, and then we're going to go to Scripture, beloved. Think about what it would be like if we were all, and once again, we talk about politics and civic uh, issues to make a spiritual point. 
if we were in our fellowship, then the congregation would have finished that point because it's something that we often uh, say and repeat. Think about what it would be like. And remember the title of the text. Remember that the title of the text is moving ahead of the curve. That's what the believer is designated to do. And we're going to explain further. What if we were all getting the same information at the same time? So the same time the president of these United States was receiving an update on maybe the mortality rates or the actual information. Now, some of you all, you all, you all would love this, but continue to listen in because you're going to understand our point. Hang in there with me. If you, imagine if you were being awakened at the same time as the president of the United States and it was being shared with you simultaneously as the president of the United States that there's a viral outbreak that's around the world and that the United States is in jeopardy of being victimized by this outbreak as well. Now, once again, so many of us think that we would love to have this advanced information at the same time as those who have to make decisions for the majority. But think about, we know what it's like, for example, when we're holding one another accountable and you ask somebody a question and they receive the information at the same time as you, but they're not as prepared as you or what have you, or they've dropped the ball or whatever the situation or the circumstances might be. And y'all know some of us help us. We need prayer because if somebody answers you regarding an inquiry, an inquiry rather that you're making and they got the same information as you and they say something dumb or stupid, a lot of times we're not kind. We're very facetious. Uh, you know, we're very smart, as it were, in our response to their inquiry because why? It's like, man, bruh, sis, you got the same information as me. Why are you responding slow or why are you responding in a stupid fashion, dare I say? But imagine if we got the information at the same time as those who have to make decisions, federal government, even on a state and local government premise. Things would not function outside of the realm of chaos that way. So the point that I'm making, which so many of you all wonderfully are already with me and in sync with where I'm going, those who have the responsibility to receive information in advance to plan and to put things in place. Now, I'm not saying they always do a good job or they don't have ulterior motives, but I'm talking about the construct itself. Those who are deeded with that responsibility have an important responsibility to prepare and to put things in place and to gather themselves so that not only when they share the information, they can inform us, but can have systems and protocols in place so that we can follow them, so that we can preserve peace and order. The same type of construct really is behind the construct of prophecy, words and lessons and teaching by his ministers, his pastors, his shepherds, and so on, and the responsibility that comes to people who receive words first to be able to share with his people. However, are we, just as the government, an example, putting ourselves in a position when we receive these words and living a life and operating as a vessel in a place and to the degree where they take root in us, we show forth the example of what has been received by us from the Most High so that we are in a place of faith, confidence, and order and of optimum preparation when we have to share it with people. Let me tell you. Honestly, the answer with a lot of folks is no. I'm not, once again, I don't have a heaven or hell to put you all in, and I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal or act as if I always have my act together. But I'm telling you, beloved, when you look at the body of Christ before the world even came to the point of where we are now, look at Judeo-Christianity through a, a macro sense, a wide sense. Look at the larger churches, like the condition that is in the Catholic Church, not just to pick on the Catholic Church, but they are the first church of Catholicos in which every other organized organization evolved from, whether you like it or not. You know, I'm of the spirit led, this or that. Listen, something, everything came from somewhere. So look at what is transpiring and, 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 and you tell me, is there a responsibility that comes with receiving this word and should people have their act together and act with responsibility regarding the fact that he chose to share this with you first? You, 
And then your responsibility is to share it with us. And then when, when the broader congregation or body fellowship receives it because the relationship with the Most High is one-on-one, -on -one, then what is their individual responsibility? So just as we should expect there to be some answers to the questions, they'll say, okay, at the end of their presentation in these press conferences, they will let the press corps, the, the members of the media, ask questions. And then a lot of times that shows what's really going on because no matter who the president has been down through the ages, I've been viewing this for a long time, by the time the media holds those who are given the press conference to task, a lot of times you can see the befuddlement that comes from whether or not the White House or the state governments or what have you have their act together or not. And then sometimes, Lord have mercy, I know it's the truth. Sometimes it's like, who invited the members of the press? Where did they come from? Lord have mercy. Do these folk get degrees? Who hired these people? What kind of question? Are, why you keep asking the same question? Didn't the neighbor next to you? Didn't the, 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 the news uh, organization adjacent to you, the last three just ask the same question? Isn't all this being recorded? I'm sorry. Let me digress. I know I'm not the only person. So oftentimes when it comes time for the whole premise of what are we to do, it shows the example of whether the person that received the advantage of the advanced knowledge really cared for and treasured the fact that they were chosen to carry that. We say often as an adage in our ministry, when is he going to read from the Bible? Hang in there. We share the example of when cabin pressure is lost in an airplane and automatically, as a default, the oxygen masks come down. And before the flight takes off even, the stewardess and those who are there to help serve the flight, they give the protocols on what you're supposed to do. And a lot of times, our first impulse is to reach out to those that we care about and love and help. But the whole premise is this. The cabin is losing pressure and you're going to lose consciousness because of the lack of oxygen that is in that cabin. If you're not aware and cognizant, you're not going to be able to help the person that you love. So it may seem selfish to prepare yourself first, but it is imperative, it is paramount that you prepare yourself first by donning the mask so that you can remain conscious and aware to help others. Join me in 2 Timothy. We're going to read chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Let's get some scriptural inference to back up some of the things that we're sharing this evening, beloved. I'm reading from the King's Authorized Version, and it reads as thus. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Once again, that means to correct, to encourage, and to teach with long suffering. So, this backs up something we've been saying the last several words since we've been live from home, not able to meet in our body fellowship gathering. Long suffering, Paul is sharing with his understudy, Timotheus. Through Difficult times and things that challenge you, you are still expected to deliver encouragement, correction, and teaching. Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, my Lord, but after their own lust, listen, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. He's encouraging young Timotheus that's, that was going to follow after and take up the mantle from Paul the Apostle and continue on the work of the Hamashiach of the Christ. Encouraging, with the, encouraging him on what to do and how to do it. And here it is, man. With regards to let me just say this. One of the reasons why the message is not clear, one of the reasons why a lot of times when we receive the message and 
there doesn't seem to be a clear plan on how to execute it. Is that, let me tell you something, and I'm not saying I'm the only one that has a word, God forbid. But we have to begin to start dealing with, and this is the excellent time and season that we're in to deal with this. Listen, everybody not carrying the Most High's word. And you can know this not by, because there's a whole lot of people saying that I'm a prophet of the Most High. A whole lot of people saying that I'm a messenger of the Most High. That don't mean that they are. We can say what we want to say. Scripture says that Christ taught us when they inquired, how will we know your messengers? He said, you're going to know them by their fruit. You can say one thing, but if you're talking about that you're a fountain of annihilators and you spitting out Skittles, then it doesn't matter. Irrespective of what you say you are, if you say, I know it's a, this is just me, y'all pray for me, annihilators and Skittles, what? If you are saying and declaring that I'm a mountain of annihilators, candies that is, but you're producing Skittles, the Skittles is what you are. Uh, James, the friend of the Lord, and his epistle state, stated clearly that bitter and sweet cannot come out of the same root, meaning that you can't declare yourself sweet, but what you produce is bitter. So there's a whole lot of people that we have even put in a position to receive saying that they are carrying an advanced word from the Most High, but their fruit does not designate or prove or validate that that's so. Isaiah 9 and 16, there's a verse that the prophet was sharing with regard to what the Most High was speaking to him concerning his people. He said, the leaders of this people caused them to err. But watch this. But they that are led of them, it says the leaders of the people caused them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. There's a responsibility from two factors. The people that profess to be the messenger of the Most High have a responsibility to be accurate and valid and authentic. But then there's, a, there's still a responsibility on us as those that follow those leaders. You're not off the hook. When you're in judgment, you're going to be in judgment according to our faith in the scripture alone. Even if you try to say, I was misled by my pastor or by these leaders, you have a responsibility. That's why you got a responsibility to dig into this word for yourself. Don't eat out of man's hands, we say at Exact and Truth Ministries, because you don't know where man's hands have been. You have to make this information good for yourself. You have a responsibility. Now, the reason why this is important, beloved, is because this is a perfect time and season where, and forgive me, and excuse my vernacular, folks, BS meters are on. So a lot of times we're at different places for different reasons. I had an adage once that may be offensive to so many of you that the most I believe the most high, it came by the inspiration of his Holy Spirit. You, you may question that once you hear what I'm getting ready to say. People go to quote unquote churches just like people join gangs. They have an ulterior motive or an agenda or an ambition for why that has something other to do than life sustenance and growth spiritually through the word and spiritual guidance. People go places to hook up. People go places to try to tap into resources that's greater than their own. So the thing that's important, though, is we're in a day and a time where people are hungry and they're starving and they're looking for, listen, who's living? Who has an example and a fruit outcome and base that is indicative and models the most high? Who's telling the truth? Don't candy coat it. Don't sugar coat it. Because we're in trying times. I'm trying to find out what God is really saying. Now, it's sad that we've got to get to a place of what we perceive as danger or troubled times to get there. But let me tell you, everybody running around and dancing and trying to portray, uh, you know, this stuff that's other than what the Most High is sending and has sent. Folks, BS meter is on 12. So a lot of this stuff is not going to stand up in this damn time that we're trying to shovel over on God's people. So this is what he's, in essence, Paul the Apostle there is telling Timothy about how he should be prepared and his responsibility with regard to distributing the word. Now, let me share this. A lot of us are shaken, are broken with regards to prophecy and not understanding it correctly because we don't know or have not taken the time or it is not taught what it really is out of the word 
as we aforementioned, you can say what you want to say about what you think it is. But once again, what does it really mean? So let's examine that. Prophet is a noun from the English lexicon that describes a person who foretells or predicts what is to come. A person chosen to speak for God to guide his people. You might say, duh, okay, I understood that already. That's not deep. All right, let's look into the etymology or the origin of the word because words came from somewhere. Like we before mentioned, everything came from something. And we're making stuff up in this day and time. But it came from something, so that means it has orthodox or original or valid meaning, and that is still operating in reality and in truth, despite what we call it, something, or if we change the, the meaning thereof. It's derived originally from the Greek word prophetes, prophet that is, which is comprised of the prefix pro, which many of us already know means for, to be for something, uh, and the root fetis, which means speaker. So the term literally means to speak for. Now, that's what we get when we're in the Greek scriptures, when we're in what we call the New Testament. There's debates that go on, but I'm not going to get into that right now on what originally the New Testament uh, codices and texts should have been uh, derived from, you know, and you can get them in Hebrew and in, 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 in Aramaic text, but... The Bible generally in English that we read from is directly translated from something called originally the Codex Sinaiticus, the earliest known form found version of the New Testament found in the uh, mountain of Sinai, somewhere about the third century, as it were, the second or third century. And that was found in Greek. So we get these words. That's why, you know, a lot of times it's important for us to begin to explain stuff. We, we get excited when our minister says, and the Greek said, yeah, well, why is he saying it in the Greek? Why is it? Well, he might as well just be, uh, you know, sharing what it says in the Mandarin if we don't have understanding behind this. We want to go to the origin of the word. We're not just trying to be deep. So it means to speak for. So this word is utilized uh, to say that this is an individual who is speaking for God. Now. When we receive prophecy and when we look at the vessels that are prophesying to us, can we imagine or do we validate in our spirit, not that we have a heaven and a hell to put people in, but when we're looking out of our own eyes and looking out of our spiritual understanding, if we're to be honest, is this person speaking for God? You know, you got somebody that is giving you, they say, God gave me a word for you or giving the word for a body and help us if we're dealing with national or international leaders that we're watching on TV or on our favorite Sunday cable channel or what have you. And we don't even have a chance to look at their life up front. Look and see what their fruit is. Because mankind a lot of times is satisfied when they see thousands of people. We quantify success with numbers. That's why most all of us want to be rich. But that's not necessarily apparent where you find the fruit of the Lord in a lot of money or in a lot of people. For example, gathering around. A lot of times, a lot of people gather around because somebody's saying what they want to hear, but I digress. Now, in the what we call the Old Testament, which is representative of the Hebrew scriptures, there is a different word for and used for what we account as a prophet. The primary Hebrew word used in Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament for what we refer to as a prophet is the masculine noun pronounced now be. We spell it N-A-V-I, transliterally, or N-A-B-I, because uh, from that Hebrew, that B is uh, pronounced or enunciated, uh, that B rather, as a B. It literally means to bubble up. It describes, in essence, a chosen spokesperson who is stirred up in spirit by the Most High. When the sense of bubbling up, for example, is applied to speaking, it becomes to declare. Therefore, a now be, or as we refer to it as a prophet, is an announcer, a messenger sent from the Most High that pours forth the declarations of the Most High to those designated to hear it. Now, let me ask you a question. When they declare it, what condition are they in? Have you found a prophet or a now be, as it were, that comes, whether it's in your pastor, whether it's in an evangelist that come in or what have you, whether it's in a regular parishioner or layman that says that they have the gift, they've been chosen by God. What is their protocol? What is their demeanor, their behavior, their language? 
Do you got somebody that has received a word from the Most High for you to share with you? And I'm not saying that they have to be infallible. We come into this world infallible. So it's not a judgment of that they're walking with pure excellence per se. But man, have you ever received somebody set aside a word or a word addressed to the congregation? And then the person in the worst condition after the word is received is the person that shared it. There's something wrong with this process. How are you picked to receive a word in advance and you seem thus after sharing it less prepared than the people that you shared it with that the Most High gave it for? Why? So once again, now you, can, you guys can understand the whole example about the press conference. How are you going to hold a press conference and you not prepared to hold it? Or you don't have, uh, you haven't even thought of answers or protocol. How about you don't hold the press conference until you get your act together? See, there's a responsibility, beloved, and that's the meaning of this word. Moving ahead of the curve. He shares with his chosen words in advance. Now, this is connected to the two prior lessons live from last week, uh, Saturday and the prior Wednesday. Yes, we should operate in faith and confidence. Yes, we should be assured. Yes, we should be able to be leaned on in times like these as believers. Not because it's not scary. Not because we're not facing things critical that can shake our very foundations, financial implications, uh, concern about loved ones becoming gravely ill ourselves. But, beloved, I will continue to say something. Y'all might sound, you sound like a broken record. I'm not going to continue to tune in because you're saying the same thing. Beloved, these are lessons and fragments of lessons that we have to put together that help show us how we and who we are to be in these times. You knew this was coming. What did you do in preparation? Because everybody ain't know this was coming. S some people acting crazy, and understandably so, because they weren't paying attention to nothing. They was watching Green Anchors. They was watching old episodes of The Love Boat. They, folk wasn't, they weren't prepared for this. That's not letting them off the hook, but that's why he chose you. W why, beloved, are so many of you all, I say this, dare I say this lovingly, acting crazy? You claim that you was his elect before this. We have a responsibility. I'm not judging you. I'm saying that in case you missed it before, now you're hearing it now. You have a responsibility with what is being shared with you. You can't just go dump your notes. You can't just close the Bible and then close your spiritual understanding. There's a responsibility that comes with getting this first in line. I'm preparing to close. But first, I want you to join me in 1 Peter, the epistle, first epistle of Peter, rock of the church, as it were, second chapter, verses 9 and 10. Hopefully you got it. Reads as thus, but ye are a chosen generation, I told you, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now we can dance on income tax return day when we receive it, but are we dancing, recognizing now, and even the more so now, this is who we are and who we've been called to be. Watch this 10, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So you're in the front of the line and he has favored you as such. And you have a responsibility, not just to brag that you favored. The first thing that is essential in moving out in the most high's will and purpose in an advanced fashion, when you receive it before everybody else, as it were, everybody wants the title. Nobody want to deal the responsibility of what it means to receive a word in advance. What did you receive it for? Did you receive it so that you can keep it quiet? Just tell the people that you feel like you want to tell and then just let the whole world go to the pot? Or is there an assignment from the Most High that comes with receiving advanced knowledge? We mentioned on Saturday Sabbath, this prior Saturday Sabbath, that we want to pick and choose who we deem to be blessed. But when, once again, you go to Acts 9 and you look at the responsibility that was with uh, Ananias, to, to pray the scales off of Saul, the Pharisee's eyes, 
So many of us would be like, no, nah, mm, couldn't be me because they are Trump supporter. Mm -mm. You know, send somebody else, Lord, or it couldn't be me because they don't like black folk or they don't like white folk or they don't like, listen, beloved, you received this word, you've been chosen and you've been favored, but you have been tasked with a responsibility and a duty and a deed to be able to disseminate this word according to his will, to, to spread it out according to his will and not your own. So the essential thing in moving out of the most high's will and purpose in advanced fashion is, first of all, realizing self-recognition. What do I mean by that? If you don't know who you are, then you will not recognize words of power and destiny that are directed towards you or it will not register that these words are for you specifically. Now, if you turn with me to John 10, Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, I'm going to share with you what we mean by that. Verses 1 through 5, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, the pastor of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them. For, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger, listen, will they not follow, but will flee from the stranger, for they know not the voice of strangers. We shouldn't be following after every wind of doctrine. If we're his sheep, we should know his voice, and we should recognize what is his voice and what's not his voice. Go down to verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, the Christ said. One of the main problems that we need to examine, beloved, when we're looking at moving ahead of the curve is have you even, has it registered in your Holy Ghost understanding, can you even admit and profess under the conviction in your own heart? Not somebody walking up to tell you, you anointed, you blessed, and his hand is upon you. How often has that transpired and then we've gone astray or been led askew? Do you really believe, are you convinced that you are a royal priesthood and a chosen generation? Do you even know that you've been set apart for his purpose? If you don't understand that you've been elected, you're not going to act beloved like you're elected. If you don't look in the mirror and in your spiritual understanding, know that you're his, then you're not going to operate under the birthright that you're his. It's powerful to understand. Let me share this with you. Imagine the panic in the disorganization that would ensue if we received critical information at the exact same time with no preparation, with no plan, with no roadmap. The most I was speaking to his prophet Habakkuk in the second chapter of Habakkuk. Verses 1 and 2, and it states, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. I Man, I'm going to be prepared to receive because I'm in a position that I know is unique as opposed to mankind. And what I shall answer when I am reproved or corrected or instructed. Verse 2, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Tonight, as I close, is about the responsibility that comes with the word. A lot of us like <laughs> the scripture, hide the word upon my heart that I might not sin against you. That's for you, but you don't hide the word from others. If the gospel be hidden, it is hidden to those that are lost, the scripture says. There's a responsibility that comes with knowing something that everybody else don't know or they're not listening to it until it grabs their attention. A lot of times stuff don't get our attention until we're in trouble or dare I say until it's almost too late. 
we've been given and we have been faithful, so many of us. So many of you all have gathered with me tonight because you're faithful. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm not trying to be oppressive in this reproof. You're faithful to gathering. You're, you, you're so faithful until you find where there's a word. We're not able to gather here by, uh, you know, the commission of the state. The Bible instructs us to follow the laws of the land. Some of y'all still trying to meet. I, I would caution you against getting together with a thousand people. But I digress. You're finding faithful avenues to receive word, to fellowship with one another. But I'm just telling you, beloved, I'm not the only one that has an assignment in this day and time. All that time where we were at peace and we were gathering faithfully and in peace and, and volitionally wherever we chose to gather. There was a responsibility with every single one of those words. You're accountable with regards to every single one of those words. Let's close. Hallelujah. Let's close with this because I don't want to keep you all. Prime time is getting ready to come on. And Lord, some of y'all going to turn me off anyway if I keep talking because your show is about to come on. Somebody tell the pastor my show is about to come on. Revelations 2, chapter 2, as we prepare to close. Some have been called to prophesy. Some have been called to pastor. Some have been called to teach. Some have been called to be evangelists. Some have been given the gift of helps. Some uh, have the ability to be able to, uh, to praise and be a light. We're called by the same administration into different demonstrations, but we all have a responsibility. You can't hoard the gospel. It's good news. It's designed to be shared. <laughs> it's a bubbling up, as we say it, from the Nabi definition, from the Hebrew. Revelations 2 and verse 29. I want to leave you with this. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, unto the body, unto the ecclesia, as it were. This particular chapter deals with a prophecy from the Hamashiach to John the Evangelist and the Revelator for the seven churches that are in Asia. Our responsibility is to have an open ear and understanding to receive what is given and then thus operate under the responsibility as messengers, as spokespersons, to distribute it, prepare ourselves first, operate under the advantage of knowing a foretold knowledge and then prepare so that others who he designates that word get to or receive it so that they can prepare. There's responsibility with this. It's not just a daily devotion that you can say, all right, I've done it, and then it's over with. The world is faltering because now that we can, listen, can't you tell how little prepared we were for this circumstance, this crisis hitting the world? Everybody pointing fingers, everybody criticizing, ain't enough ventilators. Ain't enough masks. Ain't enough toilet paper. It ain't that much doo-doo in the world. Ain't enough this or that. Why is there not enough? Because the whole world is not operating Josephically. The whole entire world, when there's fun times and when there's party times, and when there's holiday times, and it's supposed to be a holy day, people are operating in merriment, Celebrating, dancing, partying, becoming drunk, having a good time. And everybody ain't becoming drunk. I don't drink, but you understand where I'm coming from. Everybody doing everything but preparing. We have a responsibility. So please, once again, we're going to close with prayer. But share this. I showed up Wednesday night. I appreciate the word, Pastor. Share it. Share the word. If you're not going to share the live, because it's not about me, I'm not trying to promote that man. Okay, then fine. Then take your notes that you've taken from this lesson or from your other Bible studies, wherever you're congregating, and don't just close the notebook to collect dust. The, the Lord gave you that word for a purpose, not just for yourself. For yourself, mind you, 
Because the advantage is that you've been put first in, in front line. I know I'm being redundant, but I'm being redundant for a reason. You've received it first in line for a reason. Apply it to yourself. Put the mask on for yourself first. But then there are other people in the plane cabin that need help afterward. There are other people that need help with their mask. Don't just close off, log off of Facebook Live, and then wait till the next time somebody's saying something. What are you supposed to do? And then put yourself in a position where you can receive his word in the first place because contrary to the way the world looks and Judo Christianity, Judeo Christianity looks, everybody that's saying, Lord, Lord, is not from him. Everybody that's claiming that they, listen, most of these folks prophesy don't even know the definition and the meaning out of scripture. We're eating out of people's hands. They see a prophet and they saw the big offering that was raised for that prophet. And all of a sudden they got a word. Share this live. Share with one another the words that you receive so that they can prepare. Love one another. Be prayerful. Be instant in season, out of season. Men ought to always pray and not faint. We love you, and there's really nothing that you can do about it. And once again, we appreciate you for being faithful. Love upon one another. Let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time. Uh, in your holy writ, these words that were left on record for our learning, we hold them up. We exalt you. We trust you. Right now, those that are sick, if it be your will, we speak healing in their life right now. Those who have lost jobs, we speak resources, resources on the way according to our faith and according to your word. We've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed beg for bread. Gird up the loins of our mind and our understanding. Give us strength right now in these weak and broken times. But take the weakness and the brokenness and use it in humility for your purpose. Remember the truly poor. Let us be a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. The light of the world, salt of the earth. And we ask these blessings in your name. Yehoshua HaMashiach. Yeshua, the Christ's name we pray. Thank you. God bless you.